being part of ET Hospitality's first fireside chat. This is a beginning of a series of hospitality leadership summits and meetings. And I thought it would be great to start with you because of the kind of work that you've done for the Indian food scene. Now, people just think you're on television. They don't realize the hard work that goes on behind it. And I know the kind of research you guys do, the kind of standardization you guys do, the kind of things that you've done to really make food, which is so unique, be so, uh, you know, so easy to replicate. So, uh, of course, now, of course, we are meeting in uh, circumstances which are not as rosy as uh, I would have liked it to be. And, of course, with the uh, lockdown and the current doldrums of the f &B industry, now, along with being an entrepreneur, a television star, a chef, you are also a restaurateur. And I remember you had a lovely chat with me in which you spoke of certain things. And I think you were one of the first people to speak about the hard decisions that you have to make in the f &B industry. Going forward now, I think slowly the government is going to ease the kind of, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, laws and rules and slowly restaurants will be able to surface again. Now, right now, what do you think the things uh, a restauranter has to consider and do at this very moment after being shut since uh, middle of uh, March? Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vikram. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and thank you for uh, inviting me. And uh, uh, I think uh, when I look at you and look at uh, your shirt, uh, everything is rosy and uh, that's making me green. Uh, but <laughs> I, I think uh, okay. it's, uh, uh, you're right. Uh, the, the circumstances are uh, tough. The environment is uh, tough. Uh, and uh, But uh, as they say that uh, nothing is permanent, uh, even uh, this shall pass, even uh, uh, this uh, uh, shall, uh, whatever is there, good, bad, even this will uh, go away. So uh, I would say in terms of the uh, hospitality, in terms of the restaurant uh, industry, these are uh, testing uh, times, I would say. And in that, uh, uh, I would say that, uh, uh, and I've been saying this to all the restaurant uh, uh, people who uh, speak to me or uh, who are in touch uh, with me. And I tell them, I said that uh, you've got this time, uh, treat this as if uh, you're renovating your uh, restaurant, right? Uh, so at times uh, we renovate the restaurant uh, once in three years, uh, you renovate the restaurant in... Uh, uh, five years, uh, uh, and, and there's a lot of thinking that goes in. It's not only the interiors. Uh, there's a lot of thinking uh, that goes in, and that uh, renovation, uh, you you start thinking that what else should I change? What else I should uh, do? So I would say that uh, this is the time to reflect, and this is the time to uh, do renovation and reinvention of uh, thoughts, of ideas, of the market uh, that is uh, changing and uh, uh, start uh, pre pre prepping and planning uh, for that because uh, it's, it's no point uh, saying that, oh, this is bad, this is what I cannot do, this is... Uh, I, I think each situation, uh, there, there's a storm. Uh, imagine uh, every monsoon, four months, uh, uh, flights, uh, okay, not now, but normal uh, monsoon, there are flights that go and uh, there are storms and everything. Do you think that uh, the pilot just uh, sits there and says, oh, there's a storm, uh, let's see what happens, we'll see. It's bad, uh, if we survive, we survive, we don't. They don't. Every time they land, they, they weather that storm. So uh, I think that, that's what uh, we as industry, we have to do. We have to weather this uh, storm. And uh, the only way to do that is uh, by being uh, smart, by being uh, efficient, by being... Uh, by uh, being uh, good planners, by uh, looking uh, at uh, what is it that we uh, could have done uh, better. What as an industry, there, there may be some collective uh, decisions that need uh, to be taken. So for example, I, I would say that uh, one of the things that I've been uh, saying it for years that uh, the business model that uh, we need to look at uh, as an industry is uh, uh, where there is more uh, variable cost. Uh, we, we work in the industry, in the restaurant industry, at a very high uh, fixed cost. So uh, one of the uh, first things is to look at uh, how in this uh, time, 
you can convert uh, most of the costs into uh, variable costs and uh, don't uh, don't look at uh, temporary solutions after this so people may give you a temporary solution uh, landlords may give you a temporary solutions there are many people who may give temporary solutions and that that may seem like a good thing to do and uh, but you may again end up uh, uh, in the same rut so my suggestion would be to use this time convert as many costs as variable costs and uh, uh, look at uh, how uh, then uh, the change in environment uh, uh, is, is uh, giving you new opportunities uh, grab them and uh, go after them uh, each market is different each segment is different uh, each location is geographic location is uh, different so you will have to deep dive little bit more uh, don't uh, consider this as uh, as vanity this is business this is real business there's a lot of data that that goes in this is probably one of the only businesses where uh, it works on anecdotal uh, data uh, mm. whereas most other businesses uh, there is we, we deep dive into uh, data which is uh, real and uh, everyone demands that real uh, data uh, here you may open a restaurant and then look at oh business is not happening because you did not deep dive that why were you opening the restaurant mm -hmm. with that kind of offering offering just because you did a course in france and you could do something better and you thought that oh i will open this and this is the place i got and this my uh, i got the money from my investor no that, that's not business that that's you are you are this uh, uh, you're doing a hobby and that uh, hobby is uh, uh, not not business so this is the uh, real time for uh, i think uh, creating real businesses and if if you still cannot get real get out yeah now the the next question that i was going to uh, ask you because from the end of your last answer which is that uh, fnb and restaurants has always been an industry where there's been a lot of amateur interest a lot of people says ki beta you know they say ki ha you know the 20 lakh rupees or something is there let's start a restaurant i mean and there are some very famous restaurants i remember doing a Uh, a shoot with the gulatis in delhi in pandara road and he basically said that his dad failed at everything then had enough money and started a chole bhature stand and that is where the business started now that is a uh, restaurants are still one of those places where you can have rags to riches stories but with this current situation going past us will it still remain as the two parts of the question will it still remain as attractive to the people who want to come in as amateurs and secondly do you think the industry will survive without this kind of infusion of cash that comes in from amateurs where the professionals can then be able to direct this cash if i may use a euphemism so that they will be able to bring their you know <laughs> uh, very interesting uh, because i think uh, no business can be done like Uh, mm. there, there are isolated uh, success uh, stories, uh, but business uh, needs a very focused uh, approach. Uh, it needs a dedicated uh, work uh, to build a scale. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, hard work uh, that is uh, needed. Once in a while, some people may uh, may do uh, well, uh, but uh, uh, otherwise, uh, you you need to really really deep dive into. all aspects you cannot you cannot build a business because uh, just one part of the business is something that uh, you knew or uh, you, you had some knowledge of and you thought that i will do this uh, business uh, i think the biggest uh, trouble that i have seen over the years is that uh, in some sense entry level barrier is uh, low when i say that there are many people who uh, say i understand food i i i understand i like to eat food and every food time i go to any restaurant uh, they are always full uh, and uh, so i should also uh, do well because every time uh, they any time restaurant uh, i go to and i tell them have you been to any restaurant on monday and tuesday lunch time if it is a dinner place uh, go and see they still have the ac running they still have the staff they have everything and uh, what kind of sales uh, would they do but you you choose to ignore that uh, people like to get into restaurant business because their interface is uh, uh, easy and they think that they can do it i i say that but you look at a tv channel you see that and uh, you see ads coming why don't you think of uh, launching a tv channel 
you, because you don't understand it, you don't understand how the satellites work, how the lights work, how content is, and you think it's it's huge. Here, it's a business uh, which uh, you feel that it's it's nice. It's something that I can be seen it. Uh, and uh, what does it take? Oh, it take one crore. It take two crores. Even if it did not do well, what will I lose? I will lose one crore. I lose two crore. Most people get into uh, this business thinking like that, and most of them lose that money, which is which does not do industry very good. Maybe you, it may give uh, generates a little bit more employment to, to some people. That loss funding may uh, do that, but that in, is never good for the industry because industry then uh, starts to lose its charm, the real charm, real money. It does not attract them. Then the uh, money that could be coming in for from investor, serious investor, starts to uh, stop uh, because uh, uh, you, if you look at it, in last two years we have not been able to attract a very good amount of uh, private equity money into uh, this limited money because we have not been able to show, show scale and success. So uh, my uh, suggestion uh, would be that uh, get into this if this uh, means uh, uh, that this is your livelihood. It, uh, it is something that uh, you can hand this, uh, uh, this business. Business is perennial. Business uh, is something that can be handed over from one generation to the other. Get into it if you can see that your next generation will also uh, do it. Uh, why, why don't you uh, do something, let's say, um, very attractive business of uh, uh, getting uh, gall bladders of animals can be sold at a very high premium. But you say, nah, what? what is that business? You don't see it, right? So, but uh, restaurant, you go there and you say, ah, this is me. I can see myself calling the shots. Uh, but uh, more often than not, it's not... Uh, Yes. Okay. Now let me get to the Ate Dal side of the business, which is of course your absolute at your fingertips. Now, uh, one of the things that has really been hit with this current situation is supply chain. Anyhow, supply chain has always been a big bugbear for the restaurant industry, especially the high-end restaurants or those who have unique venues. Now, going forward, how much time should a restaurant take now at this moment and going forward how much time should they you know dedicate trying and adjusting their menu so that they will be able to give good interesting food because obviously food has to be interesting it has to be tasty and it has to be clean and healthy so what is the way forward right so first and foremost where you are at uh, uh, since it's business, it is not uh, that uh, it always needs to be interesting. It need not be always uh, uh, healthy. It is something uh, uh, what you can sell, right? It is uh, it's something that where you are, uh, you may be uh, selling bada pav and do a very good business with that. Uh, does that make bada pav very healthy? No, it does not. Does uh, business of uh, pizza, is it very healthy? But it may do uh, very well. So it depends on... Uh, what uh, what choice uh, have you uh, made? You may want to position it as uh, healthier than uh, does it uh, stand more chance? Maybe differentiated products uh, do a uh, uh, little bit uh, better. Not always. Uh, it's, it's familiarity that sells the uh, most. But the storytelling is differentiation. So what happens is you bring people in by differentiated product so that they consume something that they are familiar with. That's how uh, businesses, most businesses work. So you use that as a marketing tool, differentiated story, but familiar product. That's what businesses are built uh, on. So uh, I, I would uh, say that uh, in terms of supply chain, uh, uh, it, it's uh, this is the time to bring in, again, efficiency into this, uh, bring in uh, where the, there may be certain things you are getting converted at your store, uh, look at the people who are doing that as a profession. Uh, for example, uh, there are many things that can be outsourced. Uh, uh, for example, uh, rather than buying full uh, uh, meat, chicken, whatever it is there, look how if there's a professional who can do that for you. Uh, maybe uh, there are uh, many food service suppliers uh, who do many things. Uh, how can uh, you uh, 
uh, reach out to them normally they want scale right yeah. but but i i think everyone uh, would suffer so identify people uh, who can uh, give you supplies uh, which can make your product consistent uh, get your product consistency uh, will take your manpower uh, cost uh, low uh, so look at many food service solution vendors uh, and try and work with them they will give you solutions uh, which uh, uh, which may be used uh, best practices may, may be used by many bigger players so there's a lot of learning uh, that happen and in supply chain i, I think this is uh, probably the best time uh, one to get into food service uh, yourself also as a food service vendor uh, you can uh, rather than looking at business from b2c because most people uh, who want to get into restaurant industry look at the b2c part so i would say that uh, start looking at b2b part little bit boring but maybe better uh, business uh, so uh, there are um, fortunes uh, build uh, uh, in uh, yeah uh, cisco in us right that's a 55 billion dollar uh, company a huge uh, uh, business i think uh, today the uh, f&b professionals who are in this industry uh, start looking at the b2b opportunity uh, this will uh, uh, this time there may be many people who may lose their job tough reality yes uh, best time to become an entrepreneur it is the best time to become an entrepreneur because uh, your risk is low when i say risk is low you don't have a job what will you lose you didn't have a job right so so the best time to be a b2b supplier do something look at the pain points as a as somebody that who was in uh, uh, was in restaurant industry and if they and if you wished If if I could get something like this, it would mean uh, so much uh, to me. Get into those pain areas. Uh, be uh, make yourself useful to the restaurant industry as a vendor. So so uh, that may be a very good opportunity. So look at B two B opportunity and uh, be an entrepreneur. Uh, you can uh, start uh, uh, creating your own models. Start creating a small uh, team of professionals. and i bring rest restaurant to your home something which uh, did not uh, uh, exist get two three people together and uh, it, it, that's exactly what i i used to do when i, I was uh, uh, when people didn't uh, know me i i did that i did that i had a kitchen in a garage uh, a friend's uh, garage we got this uh, this was how many years kid. ago oh that this was in uh, this was uh, mid 80s okay oh. <laughs> right so so i think you you have to learn to fight that uh, the, one of the things about the industry of course is the entrepreneurial spirit that is still there very much there and um, that's why i think uh, many people haven't lost hope but on the other hand some people i feel are being over optimistic or they don't you know there is a whole pr spin to hospitality and to restaurants so people don't want to talk about the hard truth which is something that i remember you spoke to me and we did an article about this about the fact that april and may are the months in which you will realize the hard truths and now you know like uh, people are now going back with trains also so there is going to be a loss of uh, skill labor at some point of time and obviously you can't expect to pay people all the time and even though the government says you have to pay them 100% i don't know how much restaurants can do you i'm not even, i'm not talking about the established restaurants because a vast majority of the restaurants are the neighborhood restaurants or the restaurants which are run by uh, mom and pop kind of operations now what is your opinion or what is your advice to them because they may not even have the wherewithal to go to a professional service they may be uh, you know they may be intimidated the whole thing in our country is people get very intimidated and say nahi chhod do hum nahi karenge so but what are the things that even they should do i know yeah. you can't have hash up you won't be able to do hash up forget about fssai anything of that we will get products which are at certain levels but a lot of it is entirely on 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 word of mouth and the quality of food that they already have so what is your advice to them yeah so i i think this is the uh, time to correct a uh, few anomalies that our industry uh, had and uh, i think hygiene is uh, one of the uh, 
biggest things i would say say and uh, right from the smallest uh, one uh, so need for that is uh, is today uh, so i would say that uh, uh, till now you may have survived only on quality of uh, food but going forward uh, unfortunately that will not fly uh, people uh, would uh, uh, even if uh, uh, even if you may uh, start uh, without focusing on uh, hygiene or little focus and you may do well but the risk is too high the risk is too high risk is too high in the sense that if uh, there was uh, something that goes wrong it'll uh, bring the whole business uh, crumbling down and there would not be a second uh, uh, second chance mm. so i would say that uh, correction on that side uh, is a must no matter whether you are small or not one uh, two what would uh, happen is that uh, in some sense uh, there was uh, some uh, uh, kind of a uh, mismatch on uh, on demand and supply okay mm. so uh, while uh, few areas in, in some uh, many big uh, city had too much supply too much supply uh, they, they are let, let's say uh, i live in mumbai are uh, between uh, so in andheri west uh, uh if, if you see every second shop is a, a restaurant small big uh, everything and you you get uh, uh all kinds of food right uh, and uh, before this uh, also they were struggling they, they were not uh, uh, and rentals were high and because there was demand naturally rentals uh, were high i think because of that uh, because of uh, covid there would be some rationalization that will happen naturally because some people will not be able to reopen and that rationalization i would say would also throw up some opportunities would throw up opportunities in the sense that uh, oh i am getting a restaurant at a maybe 40% of the cost that if i were to open i am getting it at a, so now my risk is uh, very uh, low i would say don't fall prey to such uh, uh, such things because the reality is that uh, demand uh, may uh, come down in in uh, uh, short to uh, mid term uh, so in that uh, it it may be okay if the uh, supply is reduced a uh, uh, little bit uh, so don't uh, don't jump up uh, onto this that because there are many people still who want to open a restaurant i have actually got calls that uh, well, i want to open and i, I think uh, there there are places uh, which would be available for uh, uh, i always wanted to open a restaurant as a shut up you have no clue is it kya jayega and and this is this is not stop this is not stop so my suggestion uh, would be to uh, such people is to uh, no let, let let it stabilize let the uh, demand uh, come back and uh, let's not increase the supply them what it is because see what happens is uh, look at uh, look at the aggregators uh, who have been controlling uh, the market of uh, delivery that is also going to increase and uh, even even after uh, the whole uh, uh, push of uh, nrii and everything and all of uh, that it's not that the rationalization in uh, uh, in the uh, percentage that they would charge uh, there there is any uh, any hope for uh, restaurant people they have to still give uh, uh, one on one they still will pay whatever uh, 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 at about 25% uh, to them they they are left with uh, hardly next to uh, nothing and if they can, can if they have to continue to do that in a scenario where there is more delivery then where where would they make uh, uh, that money so uh, prudence uh, would be uh, the name of the game uh cost control uh, would be uh, the name of the game uh, cost control being uh, i i would say no, uh, cost control does not mean in uh, taking your cost uh, down it it's uh, don't put too much water in milk that is not cost control yeah correct so cost uh, control is uh, something where uh, uh, you you are uh, i say that uh, you are uh, shaving the meat to the bone that that's uh, that's how uh, it is don't don't uh, Uh, look look at uh, how you are peeling uh, all your onions uh, make sure yeah it, it is it is important uh, it's uh, and who is peeling it the right person should be peeling the onion yeah yeah and we don't really need to go back too far i mean i am from bengal and we actually have vegetables made with peels of vegetables sure. so 
I mean, you have to go back a little while and see that we were a very frugal people at some point of time. It's just yes. that we have become very extravagant and restaurants are supposed to be extravagant for some reason, even though they serve a very important purpose, which is not extravagant, which is not only giving employment to people, but also providing food for those who can't go back home or have a home to feel. So, uh, so tell me now a very important and interesting question, which I wanted to ask you is that as a restaurateur, what percent is ego? What percent is love? And what percent is business? What is the, you know, the, the, the magic percentage formula you think? So business uh, is uh, business built around uh, passion uh, is, uh, has a very high success uh, ratio. Uh, ego in business has no meaning. Mm. Ego is uh, not, uh, uh, ego is yourself. That means you're not, business is, uh, you're doing it uh, with others. Uh, so when it is uh, ego, let it be a hobby, not business. Uh, but uh, love, definitely. Uh, love is, uh, love is passion. Love is, uh, uh, it's, it's an emotion. And uh, that's important uh, because that brings in excellence. And uh, uh, business uh, means understanding of economics of uh, uh, cost and uh, revenue and profit and uh, return on investments uh, and everything. It's it's uh, so uh, business uh, with love. Uh, I, I would say is the way to go. What made you decide to start your own restaurant franchise? What was it that pushed you there? Your love was for. Obviously, food as well as you have a flair for showmanship. You can't do what you do without a flair for showmanship. You're fantastic on camera. So, see, for me, uh, this is this is what I've been trained for, right? Uh, restaurants uh, is something that I'm uh, actually trained for. Cooking is what I'm uh, trained for. This, this is my core uh, strength. Everything else that I uh, did uh, was uh, built on acquired uh, knowledge later. Uh, so, my core uh, strength is uh, this. I, I understand... Uh, uh, this, uh, though, uh, quite honestly, when I started my show on TV, when I started uh, uh, to do many other things, uh, restaurant is something that uh, I didn't want to do because uh, it's something that I've. I know I, it's it's not uh, it's not challenging enough, uh, uh, but uh, I would say that the reason why I did it is because. Uh, uh, too many people uh, pushed me into it. Too many people wanted me to get into it. Uh, and uh, that was the primary uh, reason. And also uh, because when we are building other uh, parts of our uh, businesses, to attract uh, talent from the industry that we are in, to explain uh, that what else we do, they don't get it because they don't know. Uh, and, uh, but to attract them through restaurants, it's an easy go. That, oh, okay, yeah, 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 uh, they get it, right? Uh, and it's then uh, after they stay with us for some time, they understand, oh, this is more interesting, this is more fun, this is something. Uh, so, for example, we are, we are launching uh, something uh, uh, very soon. I think next week we will uh, launch uh, uh, some meal kits uh, we are launching, right? Uh, and it's, it's not restaurant, but it's restaurant style food, uh, which you can cook at home. Uh, it is being uh, done uh, in a very professional uh, way. Uh, how with uh, how flight kitchen uh, work uh, is done uh, and it's managed by uh, chefs but it's managed by chefs who are not uh, restaurant chefs in that sense. they've got the whole process understanding that uh, how uh, if uh, food is being transported and somebody has to cook at, cook that food and it has to stay good for uh, four days and uh, under FSSI and how HACCP and everything what's the temperature, what's it, what's safety all of that uh, they, they understand it. It's not that just you cook the food and you deliver someone yeah. else delivers and whether it is hot or not, whether at what temperature it is delivered, they don't even know. Like most restaurants, they cook the food, they give it to someone. They don't even ask whether uh, when it was served, when people had it, at what temperature did they have, at what temperature what is delivered, right? Large companies, so Domino's would be doing, doing it uh, when they deliver, right? But not, uh, uh, that's why it comes in a nice uh, uh, box, packaging, all of that. Uh, uh, but normal restaurants, uh, they don't, uh, uh, they're not equipped to think like that. Mm. So for me, uh, we, we had to train our whole team. Uh, but the input was initially all from uh, restaurants. 
Okay. Now let me ask you another question about the restaurant industry as a whole. Now, as an industry, restaurant industry is highly taxed. There are multiple permits which you have to pay for, and there are multiple laws that govern it. But at the end of it, most of the laws are easily negotiated, as they would say. So, moving forward, what do you think can be done to really improve the infrastructure, whether it is from the point of view of rules that govern, or whether it is the kind of minimum basic that all restaurants need to do? Going forward, what are the kind of things you think we need to do, and what are the kind of things that you know even state and local and central governments should do? Because it is an industry which 20 million people indirectly and directly are employed, so that's a lot of people. True, uh, I, I think it's not a question of uh, only our industry. I am in multiple uh, industries, and I can tell you. each industry has its own uniqueness and its own problems mm -hmm. and each industry thinks that their problem is uh, more complex than the other uh, so telecom says that our industry is worth i am in appliances and uh, in uh, we we have our own uh, problem we have higher taxation than yes. uh, than restaurants right uh, mm -hmm. the, so media has its own uh, uh, issues so all industries uh, have their own uh, issues i think india is very unique uh, uh, in its uh, nature and uh, the the way we have built our structures there there is lot of uh, scope for cleaning up there is lot of scope of uh, cleaning up and uh, i think that cleaning up has started uh, but there is a huge scope there is a huge scope it, it's it's uh, i i give this example that uh, uh, when uh, we used to go from mumbai to pune there was national highway was a two lane uh, 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 national highway right now we have uh, express highway that's there when it was getting built it took at that time seven years it took uh, for us to uh, build that right uh, but then when we started to have uh, traffic was a wow in our life and we could uh, see that uh, change so i think there are changes there are some changes uh, which uh, because we compare it with global uh, uh, best practices may not uh, may not be the uh, case and it's not just what we expect it is what we give we are part of this so so on terms of the rules of uh, the land that is there so for example let's say the uh, we we talk about uh, uh, let, let's let's say let's talk about uh, uh, too many uh, permissions that you need mm. so everyone knows that you need fire uh, approvals right but how many uh, restaurants riyaz, are fire compliant no but riyaz has said there's about 77 or something ridiculous amount of permissions needed to set up a restaurant in maharashtra and it's different for each state agree that that is that is definitely no i'm not saying that that's right i'm 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 current i i completely agree that we we need to treat businesses uh, 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 in a way that they become easy uh, to do yeah. but uh, i'm saying that even if uh, that's there how many people are following those uh, rules so one when there are rules even those rules are not being uh, followed just because they are under one agency the rules will be followed no i i think there is a more responsible way of uh, addressing this yeah. uh, we have to look beyond uh, i i think as as a nation uh, we uh, we are in infancy if i were to say when i say we are in infancy because uh, uh, maybe uh, our uh, parents uh, they they were still trying to fill their stomachs right in our generation probably and i'm talking of uh, not not uh, the poorest of the poor but i'm talking of the middle uh, class they have their stomachs getting full right mm -hmm. and i think uh, whether it's charity whether it's following the rules whether it is uh, all this is done when your stomach is full mm -hmm. we as a country in our progression we are i think another uh, probably uh, two decades away and that is when you will start to see uh, big scale uh, changes the character of an indian so it's mm -hmm. not about uh, uh, industry as such i think the character uh, so for for example character of it industry in our country is much better than the character of restaurant industry 
Mm. Why is that? Why? Because the client is not. Most of the clients are not Indian. Mm. The people who are giving, so they are driving that. They were ahead. वो भरे पेट वाले लोग थे. हम लोग नहीं थे. अभी हम भेट पेट भर रहे थे. There they knew that this is non-negotiable. We will not get business if we don't do it. Here we have not reached that stage. Are you saying? as as a consumer as a user are you saying that uh, a restaurant which did not have all the license you will not order from you don't even check you don't even ask you don't even see whether the uh, restaurant staff is medically fit or a food handler certificate they have you don't even ask whereas there are businesses that are dependent on that and there is some in our country i'm not going outside certain industries have started to clean up because of that pressure so till as indians we start to ask and i'm saying it is not easy i'm not saying consumers are wrong i think this as it's part of nation's growth and that is a slow process does not happen let's let's not uh, so i i we will talk about this pandemic right and uh, i i said this uh, uh, when all this started i said economic debts in our country would be much more than the uh, debts from pandemic right that does not uh, mean that we should stop looking at pandemic mm. uh, i said that in our country so many debts uh, happen but people don't even know uh, what kind of uh, people numbers so i have been supporting the clean cook uh, clean cooking alliance okay debts of people through smoking from cooking fuel cooking fuel 1 million people die every year 1 million okay and here we are looking at oh how many people have died from uh, covid everyone is looking on the phone and there is a tally as if it's a olympic tally whether we have won it or not we were not in that race we as a country are we are at a stage where there is lot of development lot of changes and as so i i would say last 3 uh, 4 uh, years like the way nri has been uh, doing so now let's let's look at uh, the whole thing the industry is uh, down in dumps real right yeah. yet they have got together and they have they've been feeding the poor people right that that is something which means ab ye bhar pet should pet bharne shuru ho gaye now that's when the industry starts to change that's when you will see the recognition of that from consumer from government from everyone the dividend payout of that that is it's not immediate matlab pehle hota tha ki acche kaam karo isi life mein aapko uska phal milega acha ya bura right so i think uh, we will get if we keep on doing right things we will start to get uh, those uh, dividends whether it is uh, Uh, cleaning up of uh, our uh, systems, which we are part of. It's, it's nothing. I, I don't think it's to do with the, the government. Uh, government does not uh, do the. Uh, uh, they don't uh, break the laws on uh, not getting the licenses. Or uh, there was no liquor, right, uh, for all these days. And one day, the liquor shops. Uh, they uh, shut that, it down in Bombay again. Yeah, they they shut it down. But no, no, no. Let, let me let me say this. Who were buying poor people who could not afford to pay a premium? There is a rate card that was moving around. A bottle of uh, black label available for thirteen thousand. Now this is something that people are buying, and I got people from as far as New York. Can you help? Can you get? I know it is. I said I don't drink, so I don't know. But there are friends who said that oh, we get it. If anyone needs, tell me. Now I'm saying. that we blame the system we say this is uh, wrong no no we are party to it so there is a there is a, a character building as a indian that is to happen and as part of that uh, i i think there is a lot of cleaning that needs to be done but don't expect that it will be done in a rush if you expect uh, to get visible changes change yourself now okay that is a very good um, uh, very good answer to the question and uh, i wanted to ask you something about visible change and something where the restaurant industry has also taken a lead it is by providing food for those who need and it's been really eye opening for people who 
I'm sure. I mean, you guys have done an amazing job. So tell me a little bit about how it's happened. What have you done? You, of course, have been uh, tied up with Taj and got food to a lot of uh, the medical workers and other people in Mumbai. But generally, even NRA has done a fabulous job, and it's, I think it's an all-round brilliant <coughs> effort. So, sure. So, so initially, uh, when I uh, started uh, this, uh, uh, these were early days, I, I should say, and I will be. Uh, probably the first one to kickstart in uh, in this country uh, where we started uh, with the hospital uh, workers and uh, uh, now over a million meals uh, have been supplied uh, in uh, different uh, cities uh, uh, with Taj. Uh, uh, we could do that. And while I was doing that and I realized that uh, Taj uh, uh, said that uh, we are happy uh, doing the hospital part. I said, no, but there are other people because I had started supplying food to uh, railway police, to other people, and I was raising funds. So I created uh, I created a uh, kind of a white paper on this, uh, which I shared with few restaurant uh, owners, uh, uh, friends. Uh, as So I realized that there were three parts to it. Uh, there was a spare capacity uh, in terms of restaurants which were shut. So there was spare capacity. If they could get uh, manpower, uh, that, that was available. Then there were funds that were needed uh, and third was a distribution bit. And so you had to stitch these uh, uh, parts together. So I created a uh, white paper uh, on that and uh, my my nephew uh, who uh, worked with the, uh, he, he used to work with BCG and uh, he was studying at INSEAD. I asked him uh, that uh, help me in creating this. And then I circulated that with a few of the uh, restaurant friends and uh, we activated uh, that. And once that uh, uh, was there. Then I, uh, uh, of course, saw that there were few catalysts. There are always few catalysts who uh, do that. Uh, so, for example, Karan Kapoor uh, uh, in Bombay and Anurag and uh, uh, all of that. They, they were start, starting to build that. But distribution was still uh, a challenge. Uh, then uh, uh, through, and this I'm talking of uh, Bombay, uh, through BMC's uh, commissioner's uh, office, they were looking at scaling uh, uh, this activity up and police was, uh, and uh, Swiggy got uh, involved. So I, I spoke to them and we, uh, once I realized that now uh, all this is uh, uh, kind of their wheels in motion, once uh, that uh, initial inertia is taken care of, uh, when wheel starts to come in motion, then uh, there's momentum. And that that's what uh, momentum I think NRI has done fabulous uh, job of not only fundraising, of executing, of delivering. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this dividend will be paid, but it's not quid pro quo. It is not because I did it, you do this for me. Yeah. You, because uh, we did this, we will also, somebody also will look after us. This, this is something that will, uh, this, this will uh, happen. We, we need to have a little bit of uh, faith. I know these are tough times. These may this may sound esoteric, but uh, let me tell you that uh, these things uh, really work. Yes, and uh, one of the re one of the things that people don't realize is that you know they you get to see the part of the meals being delivered. You don't get to see the hard work that goes into actually raising the money to get everything together, which is also equally challenging. And and I think the restaurateurs are extremely modest by not talking about that. You know, they think people will say, Nay, ye aapne paisa. but you need the money for the raw material and people are giving their labor, they're giving, getting money from various sources and they're doing a stellar job. They've done a stellar oh, job. No, no, it's, it's not easy. So I, I remember uh, for Taj Hotel when they started to uh, give, uh, uh, give uh, their hotel rooms and all of uh, that. And I was talking to uh, Puneet, uh, Puneet Chatwal and... Uh, I said that uh, there is a need that uh, uh, all these people who are working, who, whether they are cooking or serving in hotels, uh, do, doing all the service, they, they are they, they are uh, working like warriors. They, they are frontline workers. Mm. They, they are uh, similar to what uh, job uh, hospital uh, staff is doing. It, it is uh, it, it's similar. They still have to come to work. They still are taking that risk. They are no less and they need that recognition. You will see all so many messages that, oh, doctors are like God and this is this and flowers being uh, showered, petals being showered on hospital. I think the, the people who are cooking, mm. they, they, are, they fall in the same category. And I must uh, appreciate uh, this. And uh, uh, very next day when I spoke uh, to him, uh, Puneet sent me a link. 
Economic Times, uh, I think uh, ET Now, they do, did a full-fledged uh, 13-minute story on this, uh, on, on how uh, they, they are the frontline workers. And I was, I was so happy that when you have uh, recognition um, uh, from uh, uh, Good Media House, when, when they uh, do that, I think more needs to be done. More recognition needs uh, uh, to be given. So people who are uh, giving uh, uh, giving food and all of that, okay, there is there is uh, uh, cele celebration. But the people who are actually doing the job, yes. they also need some petals shower. Yes, absolutely. Okay, now uh, uh, we are now going to start questioning. Sure. Uh, we have uh, some amount of questions because we just got 15 minutes left. So first question is from Meeta from Ajman, that is near Dubai. And she is asking that uh, she's asking you personally as a restaurateur. She says that you have many restaurants in the Middle East and in Dubai and UAE, and they are about to open. So what is it that you are doing? Because these guys are going to be opening soon. So what is the kind of strategy you're doing there? And I think you should also ask, are we going to do learnings from there to bring it back to India when India starts opening? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, uh, there, there would be a big learning uh, that's uh, there. So currently, uh, I, I would say that uh, while uh, restaurants uh, can start to open uh, there now, deliveries uh, have been uh, open, but uh, business uh, is uh, very, very uh, low. There is uh, there's a lot of uh, stress uh, that's there on the business. Uh, so naturally, there are a few different things that are being uh, tried. So, for example, there is a special uh, uh, delivery and takeout uh, menu that's uh, there. Family meals, uh, uh, especially on takeout and uh, offers on family uh, meals, not, not just as a, uh, as a a la carte uh, menu. So, normally, uh, restaurants, uh, they have restaurant menu. And as a takeout or delivery, it's the menu that's uh, there. But uh, uh, what we have realized is that uh, doing specials as uh, a full uh, family uh, meals and uh, it's not only limited to uh, UAE, but we have done that in US also. Uh, where uh, so let's say a meal for four restaurant, uh, you can choose one appetizer to main course and a rice uh, dish uh, for uh, so let's say for uh, all uh, four or five dishes uh, would cost seventy to seventy five dollars, but you would get get that as a deal for fifty dollars, uh, right? And uh, that that's those kind of things are working uh, uh, really well. And also uh, on uh, systems and uh, processes, communication of that, that what uh, are you doing, how you are, uh, uh, you are uh, uh, taking care of all the uh, hygiene and what is the process. Communication of that, and th there is uh, A plus content uh, that is being created uh, where uh, we are saying, okay, this is what we are doing. So uh, there's audio video messaging that is being uh, created. And uh, that, that's something uh, that uh, uh, we are doing because in these kind of times, people need that uh, uh, assurance. Comfort. Yes, assurance. They need that, uh, oh, uh, they are doing all this, they are taking all this. Uh, whether uh, it, it's uh, contactless uh, delivery, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it gives you that uh, assurance. But what went into that? If I can see, that, that's fantastic and that's and we uh, as somebody who understand the audio video uh, uh, medium uh, very well uh, so uh, we, we are creating that kind of uh, content uh, to market uh, this and that's something I, I, I would uh, I would suggest uh, all uh, all restaurants uh, should do that create uh, showcase uh, uh, the process that they have uh, created and uh, look at uh, low cost yeah, and look at uh, low cost means of reaching out to your customers of that the messaging. That is important. It is not uh, that uh, what do you serve? Mm. Today, it's more important uh, to first give them that assurance. So create that messaging, reach that messaging. People know your product. Remember, they would not have forgotten your product. They, they would know by your brand name. They would know what you do. Okay, so Siddharth Jokani has a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. He says, how will the entertainment industry like gaming zones and cinema, where the food connect is so important, how will they come back into the market and what is the future of that industry? And when, I, I guess he's asking, when will it start off again? Because it's yeah. a crowded area. So I would say that uh, uh, food uh, on uh, those uh, areas, so let's say in, in movies and all, it's captive food, right? 
it's completely dependent on uh, the movie that uh, that you uh, see uh, most people are saying that uh, all these places will not open they would be the last to open this is uh, this is there uh, my sense my sense is that uh, they would open open sooner than w- what most people think so my my thinking is that uh, it, it's akin to uh, what uh, a flight um, if if there are three seats middle east seat is empty that's it right okay social distancing so even in film cinema halls and all of that social distancing will come into play most people have written that industry off yeah. they are saying that people will only watch no 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 they will open before most people think so actually uh, most uh, uh, people uh, uh, that that's a contrary view that i have that uh, uh, one of the industries which people is not thinking will open uh, before than what they expect is the cinema and entertainment is, is cinema other industries may open later than what most people think like which industries most most industries so so if you look at it that uh, we we have taken some radical calls and because of uh, the complexity of our uh, population and uh, what how we can manage so our index on uh, let's say manufacturing as a country currently out of uh, 100 uh, odd countries we are the lowest in last uh, one month right it stopped it stopped so i was talking to a pharma company owner big pharma company uh, almost 3 billion dollar uh, company and uh, they said that uh, uh, we we are uh, we are essential services we we are supplying to the world our 60% of our business comes uh, from the world but uh, we are still not uh, full up in our capacity uh, because uh, labor is not there people cannot uh, reach their scale so so things industries which, which should be like full throttle if they were working two shifts they could be working three shifts that may be the demand but that's not uh, happening second the demand uh, on pharma uh, forget uh, global uh, this thing indian demand has come down and how indian demand has uh, come down because doctors not are not prescribing right doctors are not at work the private clinics are uh, closed right so they, they are not prescribing so while chemists are open apart from the regular uh, it's hypertension you take that it's uh, but other than that if anything is happening people are getting uh, creating their own uh, uh, anti uh, uh, bodies for all of that uh, garam pani kada whatever whatever it's good going back to dadi me dadi ma ka nuske yeah dadi ma nuske and uh, but uh, that, that's that's happening so most industries uh, may open later than what most people expect but uh, uh, i think uh, entertainment and all may open, entertainment may open think, before yeah i think you're secretly hoping that as well because you're a bit of a movie buff you like your entertainment i think all of us are and uh, it, it's not hoping right? that's a uh, i think uh, i i am uh, i'm not being emotional about it i'm being rational i'm looking at it in a rational way okay okay so another question i think this one is from a person who wants to become a restaurateur so there's still hope and they say do you think the delivery model the casual dining model or the fine dining model will be more successful going forward it's so a bit of a googly because any answer is correct and any answer is wrong exactly but, you, but yeah but uh, naturally experiential uh, dining uh, Uh, i i would say uh, i would wait and watch uh, because experiential uh, will take a hit and uh, whatever the existing inventory of business uh, mm-hmm. businesses that are created they they cannot be uh, very quickly changed to some something else so for example uh, till many years ago uh, there, there were restaurants uh, in only hotels right though, though they still exist they cannot convert them they may they may stop uh, doing uh, their own restaurant they may uh, so let's say uh, uh, a bombay canteen does very well uh, in mumbai uh, a taj may invite them to open a restaurant uh, in taj and you shut your restaurant in a mall you come to us and we'll give you a deal that you cannot uh, mm. refuse right so experiential dining may uh, go uh, that way uh, but uh, to invest new money into that i would wait for some time okay. i would not uh, rush into it i would uh, get into things if there is uh, there, there is a smart option where there is a 
latent uh, demand is uh, there look at b2b options mm. look at uh, there are many uh, don't don't look at uh, this business delivery model or casual or uh, uh, fine dining uh, look at that there's a need for food yeah to be sold right and look at uh, target like uh, that target there is a need for unique boxes to do delivery in exactly so th- th- there is there is a there is a need uh, uh, for that there is a there is a need uh, which is uh, there for uh, safe uh, um, the, there is a need for safe uh, food yeah. right safe food safe uh, uh, delivery and which is something which can be uh, done and uh, th- there uh, people still consider home cooking to be safer than restaurant uh, yeah. cooking so you say so i have a friend uh, uh, he used to uh, run a, a pr agency right uh, he he shot all of that his wife was with the market uh, research both of them have started cooking mm. from home and uh, in, and they they are uh, busier than ever because people know them people yeah. say oh they are like us they 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 are they are giving food from their home mm. they have that comfort and uh, so so there are many models that you you're saying that you know i'm not cooking for a commercial kitchen i'm cooking from home kitchen and at the end of the month your profit with less uh, money uh, coming in also may be higher than what you can say because your costs are low your all costs are really variable uh, costs and uh, you are giving more comfort more hygiene uh, to people that this is the food that we eat i just decided to cook more and uh, this is what uh, uh, is uh, there so so those kind of models uh, are smarter to yeah. work on yeah so delivery yes uh, but but uh, bring in uh, uh, some real need into it some real story into it okay so now we have a gentleman by the name of chokalingam nadarajan and he is asking in future do you think there are going to be changes that will happen to hasap in accordance to what is happening to uh, with covid-19 or do you think hasap is itself quite uh, secure right now oh, so so understand whether it is hasap or uh, fssc they are always up to date it's not that uh, uh, it's it's uh, there so what is currently happening uh, i i think uh, hygiene uh, uh, what Uh, uh what the indian government had been uh, trying for last 6 7 years on swachh bharat i think there are many people now there is a, a uh, I, i was talking uh, a few months ago to mr amitabh khan of niti ayog and uh, he said see it's swachh bharat it's uh, something that you want to do but as a uh, country as large as us uh, we can nudge it's a behavioral change it is a slow process it will happen but we can't expect to become singapore like this Uh, but i think there's a behavioral change thanks to this because now if somebody uh, is spitting we may have turned uh, the other way till now now we would now we would ensure that no you cannot do it there be a lot of peer pressure uh, from people at yeah. large right so that that's a good uh, that, that's that's a good uh, uh, sign so you don't really what is more powerful rather than just the regulations is understanding a need of that understanding from people that power is always because rules are very stringent you understand that fssci yeah. uh, was very stringent our rules were more stringent but execution of that is not uh, easy right uh, at at uh, level of business yeah. we have to grow up and uh, i remember someone telling me quite some time ago i forgot who told me he said that the british ruled us for 200 years so we still assume that they will do all the civic work <laughs> you know that i think self uh, self monitoring is something that we lack entirely beyond the family unit we don't care or we don't want to talk about or we find it's intrusive to go and tell people you can't do this yeah so so it is that is how uh, we've been brought up and the corrective measures are taken lightly right so i i think uh, there, there is i hope uh, that this is uh, uh, this learning is not short lived yes. there's a great learning uh, that's there and we don't uh, uh, lose the benefit that we have got of it see yes. there there is there, there's a big loss uh, to economy there's a big loss to life there everything yeah. but there's a big gain on our understanding 
yeah right so uh, I, i hope that uh, we don't lose that uh, quickly and put that uh, and that becomes way of life right so let's say water uh, our understanding of uh, water is something that we say achha nahi pani saaf hona chahiye ye saaf hona chahiye so when you try right so this also i think hygiene uh, is something that uh, we will yeah. uh, start taking this uh, seriously well uh, sanjeev thank you very much for speaking with me you noticed that throughout this whole conversation i've been moving backwards and i've finally lost to the sun so i hope that the future is as bright as the sun in my eyes and thank you very much for speaking with me and we'll catch up as well later on for another session once everything is open thank you very much for doing this thank you very much and people who are uh, who have watched or will be watching uh, thank you to all of you and uh, wish you all the best and uh, people who are looking for hope remember there is a greater hope and uh, whatever is happening is temporary even this shall pass absolutely thank you thank you